Are you at odds with your own thoughts, battling against self-criticism and doubt? Want to stop your brain from making you feel bad so you can unlock your best self and become happy and successful? In Positive Intelligence, Shirzad Chamin talks about how stress and unhappiness happen because of something in your brain that he calls saboteurs. Shamin gives tips on connecting with your higher self, called your sage, to fight off these saboteurs and improve your life. In this video, we'll examine the 10 saboteurs Shamin talks about and how to use your sage to deal with them and improve your positive intelligence, plus PQ. And if this is not your first time watching my video, please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell so you are notified when I post new content. Let's get started. First, how does your brain mess up your happiness and success? And exactly what are saboteurs? So Shamin says all the stress we feel comes from bad ways of thinking that mess up how we act and think. These ways of thinking helped us when we were little and needed to stay safe, but now they just make us unhappy and unsuccessful. According to Shamayne, our brains can either help us or mess us up when it comes to being happy and successful. When it messes us up, it's because the part of our brains that's all about staying safe is in control. This part of the brain is good for spotting danger when we're kids, like when a bad grade feels like a big threat. But when we grow up, this safety brain makes things worse by making us super stressed over the stuff we can handle if we use the other part of our brain that helps us do well, not just survive. In grown-ups, the safety brain turns into different kinds of bad thinking, which Shamine calls saboteurs. These saboteurs are ways our brains deal with stress that aren't good for us, but our brains think they're the only way to survive stress. Shamin says a couple of types of stress are okay. Feeling sad about losing something and feeling bad right after something terrible happens. This kind of stress tells us something's wrong and we need to do something about it. With that out of the way, let's talk about these 10 saboteurs. So, according to Shamin, the 10 saboteurs are 1. The judge 2. The stickler 3. The pleaser 4. The hyper-achiever 5. The Victim 6. The Hyper-Rational 7. The Hyper-Vigilant 8. The Restless 9. The Controller 10. The Avoider Shamin says the judge is distinct from the other nine saboteurs acting somewhat as their manager. For this reason, we'll examine the judge first and then group the other nine thematically and address them separately. Let's start with the most powerful saboteur, the judge. The judge is like the boss of all the saboteurs. It loves to criticize you, other people, and everything around you. It makes you believe you're just being smart and trying to fix things, but really, it's just finding faults all over the place. Self-judgment is the judge that loves telling you that you're not good enough as you are. It makes you think you're only worthy of love if you achieve a lot. It tricks you into believing that if you're okay with who you are, you'll stop getting better and never be good enough. It says you must suffer to improve, and that being happy is just lazy. Judgment of others is the judge that sets impossible standards for people around you, too. It makes you focus on their flaws. When they sense you're judging them, it worsens things, creating a bad cycle. Judgment of your circumstances is the judge that tells you that you can only be happy when something specific happens in the future. It puts conditions on your happiness, always moving the goalposts. For example, if it says you won't be happy until you get a big job when you do get it, it sets a new condition for happiness, like needing a bigger house. Let's now cover the other nine saboteurs. The judge isn't alone in causing trouble. It teams up with other saboteurs to make things worse, depending on your personality and what you need. We have classified them according to the types of behaviors and thought patterns they exhibit. Critical Saboteurs These saboteurs are all about being supercritical and making us feel like we or others need to live up to impossible standards. 1. 
hyperachiever. They're all about showing off their achievements to feel good about themselves. They care more about impressing others than being true to themselves. They're competitive and workaholics, often neglecting their feelings and relationships. 2. Controller. They always want to control everything, including other people. They can't handle it when they're not in charge and push people too hard. Others feel suffocated by them. 3. Stickler. They're perfectionists who expect everyone, including themselves, to be perfect. They're super critical of others and can't handle criticism themselves. Distractive Saboteurs These saboteurs try to distract us from our problems and feelings, making it hard for us to connect with others. 1. Restless Saboteur They're always seeking pleasure and can't sit still. They have difficulty focusing on one thing and avoid dealing with their emotions and problems. 2. Avoider They focus only on the positive to avoid dealing with negativity. They avoid conflicts and suppress their negative emotions, making it hard for them to form deep connections with others. 3. Hyperrational Saboteurs They only rely on logic and ignore emotions. They can be arrogant and find it hard to understand others' feelings, making it difficult for them to have meaningful relationships. Fearful Saboteurs These saboteurs are driven by fear and often fixate on their struggles and worries. 1. Pleaser They try to please others for approval and fear of being seen as selfish. They often neglect their own needs and can burn out from helping others too much. 2. Hypervigilant Saboteur They're always anxious about things going wrong and expect the worst from others. Their constant worrying drains their energy and stops them from achieving their goals. 3. Victim They use their emotions to get attention from others and often feel like their problems burden them. They crave connection but push others away with their negative attitude. So how do you combat your saboteurs? According to Shamin, the key to combating your saboteurs is called the sage, which is basically the wise part of you that can take charge and beat the saboteurs. It's all about helping you thrive and be happy, not just survive. Here's how it works. Technique 1. Empathy Empathy is understanding and showing kindness to yourself and others, especially when things are tough. It helps heal you and others so you can keep going even when things get complicated. This technique fights against the judge's harsh criticisms and lets you see past other people's saboteurs. To practice empathy, try visualizing yourself or others as children, or imagine what someone was like before their saboteurs took over. This helps you treat yourself and others with more understanding and kindness. Technique 2. Exploration Exploration is about curiosity and finding new ideas or solutions to problems. It's most helpful when you're stuck and need to understand things better. But sometimes, we resist exploring because we're too focused on being right or winning arguments. To beat your saboteurs with Exploration. Try seeing situations from a neutral perspective, like an anthropologist studying something interesting. Technique 3. Innovation. Innovation is about coming up with new and unexpected ideas without judging them. It's best when the old ways of doing things aren't working anymore. To be innovative, don't worry about whether your ideas are good or bad. Just let them flow. Encourage yourself and others by saying yes and to every idea, which helps keep the creative juices flowing. Technique 4. Navigation. Navigation helps you choose the best next step when you have many options. It's about staying true to your values and making decisions based on what really matters to you. To navigate effectively, imagine yourself looking back on this moment from the end of your life and asking what you wish you had done. This helps you focus on what truly matters. Technique 5. Execution Execution is all about taking action without letting the saboteurs get in the way. 
It's about doing what's right without getting too caught up in the outcome. To execute well, anticipate how your saboteurs might try to stop you and be ready to face them head on. Stay committed to your plan, measure your progress, and don't let momentary successes hold you back from moving forward. Let's now talk about a concept Shamin introduces in the book, Positive Intelligence Quotient, PQ. So, your PQ measures how well you can keep your sage in control and your saboteurs at bay. It's like a score that shows whether your brain is working for you or against you. Here's how it works. 100%. PQ. Your sage is always in control and your brain is always on your side. 1%. PQ. Your brain is always working against you controlled by your saboteurs. Even a score of 51% means your brain is mostly on your side, but Shamin found that a PQ below 75% still means your saboteurs have a stronger impact than your sage. Only 20% of people have a PQ of 75% or more. To increase your PQ, you need to understand your saboteurs and consciously use your sage's powers. Shamin offers exercises to strengthen your PQ brain and make shifting into the sage state easier. Your saboteurs are in your survival brain, while your sage is in the more advanced part of your brain. You must shift your thinking from the survival brain to the advanced part to strengthen your sage. Here's a simple PQ exercise. 1. Focus your attention away from your brain and onto your physical senses for at least 10 seconds. 2. Focus on what you see, hear, or feel, and let the sensory experience fully occupy you. 3. Do this for 10 seconds, or approximately 3 breaths, which counts as one repetition. 4. Aim for 100 repetitions per day. You can do this exercise during any activity, like eating, exercising, or hugging a loved one. Make it a habit by doing a few reps every time you go to the bathroom or whenever you notice your saboteurs trying to derail you. Consistency is key. If you do this exercise consistently for a few weeks, it will become a habit and your sage will become stronger, helping you combat your saboteurs and improve every aspect of your life. Are you ready to take control of your thoughts and unleash your full potential? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this book summary, you'll love our other ones, so check them out. And remember to like and subscribe so you can stay ahead of our upcoming videos.